Well, howdy varmints! Welcome to the first beer video on my channel. I'll go to my friend's garden and we'll pick some fresh hops. We'll do an all grain pale ale. Stay tuned to see how I do it. Yeehaw! <laughs> Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. Please consider subscribing to follow my progress on building a fully robotic reflux still operating on open source technology. Today we're going to be heading over to my friend's place and picking some fresh hops from his garden. These are Chinook and Cascade hops, and we pick about somewhere just over a pound. So brewing beer in an apartment doesn't really give you all that much room. So my first task of the day is to clean up the kitchen. I'll grab my brew pot and put the dip tube in. My dip tube is just held in by friction and I put a little bit of Teflon tape in there. These are just copper fittings. We're gonna put a towel down. We're gonna put lots of towels down. Wanna get out. Towels just make cleanup that much easier in an apartment setting. Unfortunately, I don't have something like a garage that I can just hose down when I'm done. If you guys are interested in the recipe that I'm using, I'll leave a link down below in the description to my blog post and all the ingredients and instructions will be there. I'll use the tap to fill up the water and I've got a five gallon marker on the inside of my boiler. And what I'll do is I'll either add water or take a certain amount of water out and measure it with my gallon pitcher. That way, my measurement always starts off as 5 gallon, and then I'll remove or add the amount of water to get to the desired amount. For some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to make the 5 gallon marker a dent. Just, guys, don't do that. That's not the right way to do it. In case you're wondering, my boiler is a turkey fryer. It's aluminum, not stainless steel. And I do have a 1500 watt heater element, and that is hooked up to a ground fault circuit interrupter. Safety first guys, electric brewing, always need these interrupter circuits. From here you can see the 1500 watt element doing its thing. At full power, we can boil off about 1.5 gallons per hour, and with just the stovetop element being on full, we get around 1.7 liters per hour. Here is a quick clip at full boil, oh baby. I'll set up my thermometer, which has audible alarms on it, and we'll heat up the strike water at full power. While that's going on, I'll go and grab my grain mill. Again, the grain bill will be on my blog post, and um, the gap on my grain mill was actually set a little bit wider than it should have been. So I did catch this during the next brew. But some of this grain didn't get quite cracked enough as I would have liked it to, and that was reflected a little bit in the efficiency of this brew. The idea behind this grain bill was to make extra wort to accommodate the large volume of wet hops we're adding. These wet hops are going to absorb a lot of liquid during the process, and I wanted to make extra wort to accommodate that. Time to mash in. I'll grab my mash paddle, give it a good stir as I'm mixing everything together. I don't want to get any dough balls. Always overshoot the temperature a little bit and then add some cold tap water to get the desired final mash temp. In this case, I'm shooting for 154 Fahrenheit. And we're gonna let that sit for one hour. While that's happening, we'll go ahead and fill up our boiler with our sparge water. Again, I will set a temperature-based alarm on my thermometer. After the hour has passed, we'll start by recirculating the wort until we get it nice and clear. I think this is called Vorloffing, and I don't know, I just really like that name. I have a three-tier gravity-fed system, as you can see. So the boiler is on top of the stove. I put a chair for my mash tun and a six-gallon bucket on the floor as the final tier. We rinse the grains with the hot sparge water, and I try and collect about one quart every minute. I collect about seven gallons, and then I do a specific gravity reading. I'm a little bit of a nerd, and I don't trust those uh, temperature-corrected gravity readings, so I actually grab a stainless steel shaker, 
throw it in a nice bath and get it down to the temperature at which my hydrometer is calibrated to. Is this necessary? Probably not. The reading I get is 1.052. The work goes back in the kettle and I set a temperature alarm for around 200 degrees Fahrenheit to alert me when the boiler is about to boil. I add some drops of firm cap S and I wait for the hot break. Next up, I grab my hops and I take about half those hops and I'm going to put them in for a one hour boil. The other half of these hops are going to go in at about the 10 minute mark along with the cooling coil. At flame out, I'm going to add one ounce of citra pellets and turn on the cooling water. We're going to let it cool down to 20 degrees Celsius. While that's going on, I'll sanitize up my bucket and my silicone hose. Before draining my boiler into my fermentation bucket, I do like to hang my hop basket to allow everything to drain. Now that we're ready to start fermentation, I'll take another gravity reading. We ended up with 4.7 gallons at a specific gravity of 1.058, which really not that bad. We have a strong pale ale. I add a package of S05 yeast and I hit it with one minute of oxygen and we add about 10 drops of firm cap S as well. Remember to do as I say, not as I do. Uh, make sure you rehydrate your yeast before adding it to your wort, very important. We're going to fast forward about two weeks. Fermentation has completed and I added some dry hops, which was Willamette and Simcoe. The terminal gravity for this beer was 1.012, and that equates to about a 6% beer. Before kegging, I always add a little bit of gelatin. I put about a heaping half teaspoon in to about 150 degree Fahrenheit water. I just microwave that water up and mix the gelatin in. The gelatin acts as a fining agent and will clear the final beer. For kegging, I pre-sanitize the keg and then I put the empty keg in the keezer. I don't want to be lifting in and out heavy kegs of beer because I'm a wimp. I'd rather put an empty keg in and then siphon into the keezer. The gelatin goes into the keg before I start the siphon. When the siphon is finished, I purge the headspace of the keg uh, about three times with CO2. I will force carbonate this beer with 30 PSI for around 2.5 days. Now it's our favorite time, which is clean up. Yay! So I rinse everything out, and if you guys were ever wondering what two hours of time-lapse footage looked like of Alkaline Brewery Wash, uh, here you go. At the end, everything is really soapy and comes right off. Here's a picture of the beer right after kegging. So this is what the beer looks like uh, before everything's settled out and the, before the gelatin has actually taken effect. And here is what the beer looks like about eight days later. You can see that it looks beautiful. It's completely crystal clear and it's uh, pretty darn delicious. As far as the taste goes, it's nicely balanced and I actually enjoy a really good hop bomb and it fell short in that department. It wasn't quite hoppy enough for me, but if you were to ask Mrs. Joey Jojo Jr., uh, she said it was too hoppy for her. Overall, I'm very happy with my wet hop beer, but I just don't know if it's really worth the extra effort. I mean, you have to go and pick the hops, you have to make extra wort because they act essentially as a wort sponge, and it makes a really cool story, but I just don't know if the quality of the beer it produces is really worth the extra effort. So make sure you let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. I want to know if you've made wet hop beer before in the past and if you guys think it's worth the extra effort. I'd be interested to know. And thanks for making it to the end of my first beer brewing video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit that share button. Share it with your friends. Hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hope you're having a great day, and I love you all very, very much.